today is the big day. I'm gonna be swapping the 62 kilowatt hour battery into this 30 kilowatt hour leaf today. So my hope is I'm gonna drive it to the shop, use the forklift to remove the old battery, put the new one in, and hopefully be able to drive it home today also. That's my goal. Hopefully I don't run into any hiccups, but I've done a lot of pre-prep so that it should go quickly and smoothly. And stay tuned till the end because I'm going to break it down and go through every single thing I bought, how, tell you exactly how much this cost me. And also I logged all my hours on this build and you'll see exactly how much time it took me to do. This 62 kilowatt hour battery is 40 millimeters taller than this 30 kilowatt hour battery. So I made these spacers to be able to bolt them to the car. And then also these are nut plates. So this bolt will go to the frame. This will slide in here so that with the battery pack, I can do one, two, three. This one goes all the way through into the frame. So I bought a longer bolt for this and I bought the associated extra bolts for these. These was, this was like 80, $90 for the raw material. I got stainless steel thick wall mainly because I didn't want to deal with having to paint or coat these. Um, painting, powder coating would be difficult to get inside there. To do on my own, I could powder coat and have it taken to a shop, but that would cost money. Having them coated is a two week process. So I just went paid more for the material. And since they're stainless, they won't rust. These parts were just basic steel that I had and I welded on nuts these exact nuts and then these were easy enough to paint all the way around so that's what i did with these then i have all the extra hardware that i need and the last thing i have is my can bridge already coated flashed and wired up more on that later but this is to essentially trick the car into thinking that the new battery is okay and it will recognize it and operate properly for these metal parts i'll put the link to dala's github for the dimensions and how to make these same with the can bridge. And these are extensions I made for the rear mounts on the battery to drop it down 40 millimeters also. You'll see these being installed later. Since I already took off all the undercover shields, it should be simple as the eight to 10 battery bolts coming out and then the three connectors that come into the battery to remove it. And I've got the trunk fully loaded up with my jack jack stands, all my tools. I hope this is everything I need because I'm driving there and won't be able to drive anywhere else and get stuff. Now for all these videos where the car is in the shop swapping the battery, I can't use any of the audio because there's music playing in the background. I don't want to get into copyright trouble. So I'm just gonna narrate what was going on here in the shop. So initially I had to get the car raised off the ground to have enough space to be able to take the battery out. You can see the jack stands in the rear. The jack stands in the front, I used some frame points and I got some cinder blocks there to help raise it up so that the jack stands aren't so tall and sketchy. The height of the new battery plus the pallet is about 16 and a half inches. So I was targeting getting the lowest part of the car frame 18 inches above the ground to give a little bit of space to slide the old battery out and the new battery in. Next we got the forklift ready and we cut the pallet down to be 40 inches by 40 inches. The battery's 48 inches wide. So with a 40 inch wide pallet, that gave four inches of space on either side to be able to take out the bolts and have access to the bolts while the, the forklift was supporting the pallet from underneath. And then it was just simple as removing the 10 bolts that support the battery and the three connectors. And I actually forgot to remove the one connector and it snapped. More on that later, you'll see what happened. And the battery slid right out from underneath the car with plenty of space, and it's already ready on a pallet. Uh, I mentioned in my video before that I got charged a $350 core, and I actually managed to sell this old battery to someone for $900. So I have it loaded on a pallet already to load up into their truck for whatever they're going to use it for. And here's the communication connector I forgot to disconnect. This was the one big mistake I was really frustrated at during this swap. So it sheared off from the battery and I was worried for a minute that I was I had damaged the connector on the vehicle. Um, but I was able to just get some pliers and remove the battery part that had sheared off. 
and the vehicle side of the connector was just fine, so that was a relief. And none of the pins were damaged on the battery that I took out either. It was just the outer cylindrical shell of the connector that had broken. Then I realized my next mistake, so I was going to bolt the adapter spacers to the car, I realized that the bolt holes weren't lining up with the new battery. I must have misread the dimensions on uh, the GitHub how to make these spacers, or there was something wrong there. But either way, I had to chop this to effectively extend it. Uh, so now I had two separate spacer pieces rather than just one. So it still works. Uh, it would just be nicer to have it all be one piece. And here's what the spacers ended up looking like after I had to cut and chop it. This one is just a pure spacer that the bolt's passing through. And then here I have this going into the nut plate inside the tube. Same with this one. And then there's a hidden bolt inside here going into the frame. So ideally it would be better if this were all one continuous piece, but the battery is still more than supported as is. Once those adapters were bolted to the car, the next step was to load in the new 62 kilowatt hour battery. And this probably took about an hour of adjusting the forklift back and forth, trying to get two bolts in and then eventually all the bolts in. This would be done much easier with a car lift and the battery on top of a cart or something that you can swivel and pivot around easily. I'm inside the car now, putting the high voltage disconnect back in. I was panicking for a second because on the old battery, the hinge lifted up from behind and then it wasn't going on. Well, I flipped it 180 and the hinge goes up front and it fits just fine. So that's interesting that Nissan flipped the connector 180, but the con same connector still works on both packs. This here is the CAN bridge, which lets the new battery communicate properly to the car so that it becomes drivable. So this blue-green twisted pair is the CAN line. What I did was I chopped that and I actually used mating connectors, one on each side. So if I don't want the can bridge in, I can still reconnect. The side that goes into this white connector here uh, is the purple green, which is can one. This is the battery side. And then the other side, which connects to blue yellow, that's can two, which is the vehicle side. So I have those connected. And then I have a 12 volt ground which I have on a lug that I'm just using a screw that goes into this paneling here. And then the, two of these wires, well, so two of the wires go to the ground and then two of these wires go to 12 volt positive. I've pulled that off of a fuse here. And what's actually cool about this fuse, the original fuse is still inside there. And then I have an auxiliary three amp fuse for this circuit. So the original fuse is still 10 amp and will blow if it's above 10 amps. And then it piggybacks off in parallel to run to this wire with 3 amps. So this is a, just a very clean routing that it's still fused and it routes all cleanly there. All right, I just started the car. I kid you not, first start, it's reading the correct range. And we're all the way up to full bars on here. Is that 80% charged? 199 miles. I mean, it's 250 mile range. I have quadrupled the range of this leaf. I do have two fault codes here, and we'll see if I can figure those out and clear it so that I can drive this home. Okay, I went back and checked Dalla's video, and it was a P3102 code that I cleared. I'll put the link to that video in the description. But now I'm good to drive, so I'm going to take it off the jack stands and drive it home. This went so well. It was less than five hours in the shop, and this is my first time doing it, taking the battery out and putting the new one in. I might start doing this quite often. I know no shops in the Salt Lake area yet do this. Maybe I'll take it on and do that. So now that I've verified the car works and there's no fault codes and it will drive, all I did next was lower it off of the jack stands and then drive it out of the shop and drive it home. I still need to put these rear battery brackets on. I didn't put those on just because I sake of time I want to get out of the shop and I drove slowly home. Um, but you can kind of see that the front is lifted a little more and the back is a little more squatted. That's because I also need to change out the rear springs for the 2022 and on SV Plus version um, or S Plus that has the 62 kilowatt hour pack. This battery is like three, 400 pounds heavier. So 
the different set of rear springs is able to accommodate that weight accordingly. Then here's the brackets at the rear of the battery that I made. This is the original bracket on the car. You can see I'm not using that upper hole anymore because the battery is 40 millimeters lower. I'm using uh, the lower hole and I created this aluminum bracket. So you can see that bracket is stepped there right by the tip of my finger so that it nests in with the current bracket and then I just put two bolts in. Used the, reused the same bolts, did that on either side. And this here is the final difference on the new battery on the rearmost mount on the side. There's now two bolts for the mounting point instead of one. This one is not threaded in the frame and there is access to come up inside here and place a nut but the rear shock or the rear trailing arm mount is right behind it so I don't know how you would ever get a wrench on it to tighten it so I'm just gonna leave it be um, there's like more than 10 bolts supporting this it's definitely good enough I went to put the undercovers back on and only the frontmost one fits the rear two don't even come close to fitting so I put the frontmost one on as best as I could. This is the one that matters most because this covers up the HV connections up there. The other two back here, it's a thin sheet of plastic. It's not protecting the battery at all. Um, I could have bought ones from a 2019 and later on S Plus Leaf, but they're $300 per cover. $600, this is not a $600 problem. Um, it would be a little more aerodynamic with all of the covers. But I think you'd drive this car quarter to half a million miles before you'd see the savings by putting those in. So I'm keeping it simple. So now what I need to do is put heat shrink around here on these connections. And then I think I will zip tie it up in there, put the kick panel back on so that it is secure. So now I've cleaned everything up here. I've got it all put the original jacketing back on and zip tied it and all the excess can bridge wiring is zip tied same with the power ground zip tied so it's all secure and then the can bus the can bridge itself i have now that'll stick there just velcroed onto there onto the face of that connector so that will hold in place and now i'm going to put all the covers on and cover it up for good and there it is all packaged away You'd never know there's any mods under here. And now for the final step, I just got my rear springs for a 62 kilowatt hour leaf. So to swap out the springs, I took both wheels off. And then all I had to remove was the shock mount bolt on each side. Then I've got a jack under the rear axle on both sides slowly lowering it so that I can get the springs out and also not lowering it too much where the brake hose goes tight. So I was just able to pull that spring out and then they got this top and bottom hat that I need to switch over to the new spring. The new spring's not any taller, any larger outer diameter or any larger wire diameter but it does have an extra coil of spring in there so maybe that's how it's stiffer I don't know but I'm gonna swap it in and then be done now I got shiny new springs in on both sides and the shock bolts back in put the wheels on and this project is complete all right tires back on job is done and it definitely looks to be sitting a little more even now the rear has picked up it's level with the front now. And I charge it up fully and at 98%, it's 223 mile range. So 200 to 250 is probably realistic. Uh, this project went so well, that's a crazy upgrade from the 50 to 60 miles usable that was before on the car. So now I'm gonna be fully transparent and show you guys all the money I spent on this project and what the total cost was. I know a lot of channels won't do this at all. They'll just show all these projects and never talk about it, but I wanna be transparent because I think a lot of people can do this themselves and this I just wanna show an example that it can be done. So first I bought Leaf Spy and an OBD2 dongle to diagnose 
the old battery and look at the new battery. That was $48. Then the can filter and the flashing tool was $11. The biggest expense, obviously, was the battery. That was $55.35. But I got $900 back selling it to someone using it for energy storage. Then I had to buy a few tools. I bought high voltage gloves for safety for $16. I bought an OBD2 tester tool so that I could test the new battery. That was $12. And then the raw material for the adapter rails was $89. It was $10 in bolts. Uh, another $10 for the fuse to pull power for the can filter. And then finally, the rear springs were $107. So that totals $49.38, just under $5,000. If I were to get a 62 kilowatt hour battery from Nissan, it would have been $13,000 alone. There are a few EV shops doing this as a service, and I think it's $13,000 and up for a 62 kilowatt hour upgrade. So overall, I'm really pleased with the cost of this. It would not have been possible without all of his open source info out there on the internet. And I kept track of all my hours spent on this. So first I spent one hour removing the plastic undercovers. I spent two and a half hours fabricating the brackets, adapter rails, and mounts for the new battery. I spent an hour and a half picking up the battery from the depot and taking it to the shop. I spent three hours in setting up LeafSpy and OBD2 tools and flashing the can and all that programming. And then the battery swap itself took the most time. That took five hours and swapping the rear springs took one hour. So that's a total of 14 hours. If I were to do this again, I'd be much faster. I would save a lot of time programming. And if I had a car lift, removing the battery would be like one hour instead of five hours. It'd be much faster. So it could be done in eight to 10 hours the next time I do this. So this was a very successful project overall. It's a good example of how salvage parts can be used to keep uh, Nissan Leafs alive for a very long time. I think this car is probably going to be good to go for another 150,000 miles before the battery has any other issues. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I'm thinking my next project might be a K-Truck EV swap, so stay tuned for that.